Welcome everyone to our service of Easter for this morning and I pray that we'll find God's blessings in all that we do as we gather together. I'd like to invite Travis to read our opening scripture for us this morning. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. And the hired man who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming. He leaves the sheep runs away. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep, and they know me. And I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. Let us come into God's presence with our call to worship. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Let us give thanks to God, for God is good. His love endures forever and ever. Christ is risen, He is risen indeed. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Is that not the right one? Thine be the glory. We'll sing that one too.
Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and of love, we come before you on a day that is filled with joy. It is a day in which we know you have defeated death. You have forgiven our sins. That you have risen to life. That God's grace and mercy, redemption and salvation are over the face of all creation. And Lord, we rejoice to be able to come into your presence. To bind our hearts and our minds and our souls together in a risen Christ. Lord, we know because we saw the sins that put you on the cross. And we know that those were ours. And we thank you with all that we are and all that we shall ever be for the gift of grace and forgiveness that is ours. Lord, we can do no more than to rejoice in you and glorify your name with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. The assurance of pardon is absolute. Christ died upon the cross. He arose and is alive forevermore. And in that is our freedom and our forgiveness. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. This morning I would like you to join me in the litany of the life of Jesus. It's going to be a little bit difficult for us, but I think we can do it. I'm going to read the leader's line and you will read your line. You will say your line. And your line is simple. It is, let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
So follow along and we will be able to do this. Jesus came to us as a baby, was wrapped in swaddling cloth, and was laid in a manger. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Jesus demonstrated an amazing knowledge of Scripture at an early age. And he taught in the synagogues. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Jesus became a carpenter. He became a builder. And he became a teacher. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus was a son, a brother, and a friend. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus journeyed into the wilderness to prepare for his public ministry. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus' ministry was one of love. It was a ministry of justice and a ministry of healing. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus' ministry of love, of justice, and healing challenged the way in which we live. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Jesus proved that nothing can separate us from God's love. Christ's life, death, and resurrection call us to live as a transformed people. It calls us to live as Easter people. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the stone that the builders rejected, that stone has become the chief cornerstone. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, your life was a living example of God. God in our world, God in relationship to humanity, and we thank you. We thank you that the scripture offers us so much. And we pray that as we turn to your words at this time, that you will send forth your Holy Spirit to illuminate these pages and help us to find the joy that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear creation, the Lord says, I am making a new earth and new heaven. The events of the past will be completely forgotten. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. The new Jerusalem will be full of joy, and her people will be happy. I myself will be filled with joy, and because of Jerusalem and her people, there will be no weeping there, no calling for help. Babies will no longer die in infancy. All people will live out their lifespan. Those who live to be a hundred will be considered young. To die before that would be a sign that I have punished them. People will build houses and get to live in them. They will not be used by someone else. They will plant vineyards and enjoy the wine. It will not be drunk by others. Like trees, my people will live long lives. They will fully enjoy the things that have, they have worked for. The work they do will be successful, and their children will not meet with disaster. I will bless them and their descendants for all time to come. Even before they finish praying to me, I will answer their prayers. Wolves and lambs will eat 
together, blind green sky cavity, and snakes will no longer be dangerous. On Zion, my sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. Trying to continue in our readings as we turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, reading verses 1 to 12. Luke 24, verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. And the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Amen. May the Lord bless to us this reading of his own word. And Easter, we celebrate so much. But I'd like us to go back a little bit Go back to Good Friday, Monday, Thursday. Go back to Christmas. Go back to the prophets. Go back to the law. In fact, I'd like us to go all the way back to creation. Because it was there that the light of God's love shone over all creation. But darkness crept in. And the light of God's love was given to his people. But darkness crept in. And God spoke his laws to the people. God spoke through the prophets. But darkness crept in. And then God spoke again. This time using his own voice. The voice of Jesus Christ. It spoke of light in the darkness. It was the light. And it spoke to a people of darkness, and it spoke with such authority that the darkness and the people of the darkness have not and cannot overcome it. They tried. They tried on Monday, Thursday, when Satan put it into the heart of Judas to betray. And when he put it into the heart of the other disciples and they fell away and they denied Christ. And the people tried. God's own people. We ourselves. 
we all stood in our prideful arrogance and we added our voices to those that thought they could control God in the temple of humanity. And we cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Give us back what we know what we want. Give us back what we understand. Give us back our ability to control our own lives and crucify the one that seeks to change us. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. And we stand there in our resplendent garments woven of sin and arrogance and ignorance. And we watch as they lay Jesus on a cross. And we smugly justify what we have accomplished in hatred and defiance of what we once knew to be right and good. And yet, when the nails rip into his hands, we feel it pierce our own too. As his feet are tied and nailed to the cross, we feel our pride that once made us stand tall begin to fail us. And as he's lifted on his cross and suspended in the air, we begin to feel our shame as if we stand there naked, those beautiful, resplendent, clothes that we had on moments ago are torn away. Defiance is ripped from our grasp and our arms are left outstretched. Our pride fails us. Our legs start to buckle our arms are stretched. Our noble gaze is cast down at the ground as if some weight of thorns being driven into our head or driving our face into the rocky soil of this God forsaken hill. And as a thought of God comes into our minds, it's as if a gentle hand slowly lifts our face to look upon the cross. Encouraging us to open our eyes and see what has really happened. And as we look up there on the cross is creation. There is love, there is mercy. There is grace incarnate looking back down on us. And there on the cross is the very hand that now holds our face with such gentleness and tenderness. And there on the cross is a body covered with the bloody remnants of our garments of sin. And on that cross is the weight of the thorns 
and the spittle bending the head of innocence and righteousness. And as we begin to realize, as we begin to truly understand what we have done. We hear the most incredible sound we could ever hear. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And before we can ask, what have we done? It's too late. Before our eyes, he dies. And with him dies that hope that had just a moment ago sparked into our life. Just a moment ago into our hearts. And we can't look up any longer. And the shame and the remorse set in. Shame for our part in what happened. Shame for accepting the darkness that entered into the world. Shame for adding our voice to the screaming silence of human indifference and self-righteousness. Remorse, because we didn't care. For not caring to listen to the voice. Not caring to open our ears to the sound of the cries of humanity. For not paying attention to the poor and the hungry, not caring for the lonely and the frightened, not caring to hear the voice of the prophet, not caring to listen to the law. And not caring to hear the voice of the one that we helped to crucify. And now it's our place to live in that shame. And we live in that shame for a lifetime, for three days. It seems like a lifetime. And then... Then, then we feel it again. That gentle hand lifts our faces. And as our bleary, tear-streaked eyes begin to focus on the one who has lifted us up, we see his face. And we remember that face because that was the face that was on the cross. That was the face of the one that we hung there. (laughs) His eyes are something we never thought we'd see again. And in them, there's that hope. That spark of hope we thought we'd lost. And we see love. And it's directed us 
at us in such a way that we know indeed we are forgiven. And that smile, the smile of His that we have seen so many times before, but we thought we'd never see again. It warms us in a way that it never has before. It's amazing because there's a chill left behind in that empty space that was sin and corruption that had occupied our lives for so long as it's completely taken over by a brilliance of light, the assurance of life that we know with all our heart will never be extinguished. And we recognize it. For in the beginning was the Word. And that Word was with God, and that Word was God. And that Word is the light of all people. It's the light of creation. It's the light spoken into being by God at creation. It's the light that radiates the peace, the love, the grace, and the forgiveness found in a risen Christ. And it's so beautiful. And in that moment, we know we have found the joy of God's passion. For God's passion is shown in Christ's love for you. I urge you to find that joy and to be an Easter people. Amen. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Lord, what can we say We don't want to say anything. We just want to be in your presence. And the glory of who you really are. The risen Son of God. Or we would desire to, to stand heads hanging down. But you've lifted us up. You have given us hope. You have given us grace. You've extended mercy, a mercy that this world has never known. A gift of life, a gift of love, given from the Father's heart through you, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the very Son of God. And on this day, we see your power over all creation. And we rejoice. We rejoice. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And Lord, just let us stand and absorb that light, that love that so much wants to fill us. Just embrace us in your love and allow us to know that you moved heaven and earth for us this day. Amen. Let's now approach the Lord's table as we sing together the hymn, I Danced in the Morning.
Welcome to the feast that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and participate in the joy of a risen Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, you've called together a people to be the church of Jesus Christ. May your people be one in faith and discipleship as we break bread together, as we tell the good news of your name so that the world may believe that you are love, that all people will turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth. Amen. This feast, this Eucharist, this communion, this remembrance is purely a thanksgiving to God. We pray for the world and with gratitude we offer our lives to God. We celebrate this day His victory over death and we anticipate that joyful feast we shall have in His coming kingdom. We pledge allegiance to Christ as Lord. We are fed as one church. We receive the signs of His love and are marked as His very own. And those who belong to Christ, I ask you to come gladly to this table to remember His life, remember His death, and to celebrate His presence as a risen Christ to gather this church, one body. So, dear friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. I invite you to come and to sit at this table because it is the Lord's table. And our Lord Jesus Christ himself has invited us and all those who trust in him to share in the feast that he has prepared. So taste and see that the Lord is good. And taste and see what this feast truly represents. So again, unite our hearts in prayer. Lord, just a few short days ago, we remembered the night, that final night that Christ spent with his disciples, when he taught us what it truly means to be a servant when he baptized us into a servant ministry. We listened as he prayed over those who were much loved, those he called. And we relived that moment in the garden when he turned to you in the face of temptation and chose to follow your will. And we stood with Peter in the courtyard. <laughs> and that could have been us standing there denying that we knew your son. And yet, your son never denied us. 
And we confess we did not know the meaning of a broken body until we saw it hanging on a cross. And we confess we did not know the meaning of the cup until we saw his blood flow to the ground. And we stood in confusion and joy, daring to dream that all that Christ taught us would be true and that he would again rise from the grave. And today, he rose again forevermore. But yet, Lord, there are many people who still stand on the very edge of their faith as they contemplate the central truth of our faith, that Christ is alive. Send forth your Holy Spirit to be with us now as we remember the brokenness, as we remember the gifts and allow the Spirit to bless them that we might remember but that we might also rejoice in the gift of life that could only come through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So we come to this table and we call this a feast. And we think of it as a broken body given for us. But that broken body is so much more. That broken body is a life lived in obedience to God. That broken body is a multitude of teachings, of blessings, of healings. That broken body is a destruction of sin and ignorance. And it's all meant and given to us. So it truly is a feast. And we remember this. We lift the bread before God. We ask God's blessings upon it that it will cause us to remember and to know the very gift of God. And we break it. We remember a body that was beaten and torn and abused a body that walked in pain to a cross, that was laid upon a crossbeam and pounded into place and lifted on a hill of death. A body broken for us. And we do this remembering him.
And as we stand at the foot of that cross, we see Christ's life source, His blood, streaming down from broken hands and torn flesh. And we remember when he lifted a cup, the cup of the great high priest, and said, this cup is a new covenant, and it is filled It is filled with that lifeblood of Christ streaming down off the cross. So when we do this, how can we not remember the cost of that covenant? made with us. And how can we not understand that our part of that covenant is simple? Do this remembering me. the precious gift of God given to us. Let us pray. Lord, we'll never know the depth of love, the strength of will and obedience that took you to that cross But on that cross, you bore our shame. And you paid the price of our sin. And you ask only that we accept and remember and believe for that gift to be ours. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Amen. I come with joy.
Look, God says, I am making a new heaven and a new earth. The events of the past will be completely forgotten. So be glad and rejoice forever in what I create anew. Wolves and lambs will eat together. There will be nothing harmful or evil on my holy mountain, says our God. And this is the same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and whose spirit goes before you into all the world. So go in the name of the Father, the God of creation. Go in the name of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the new creation. And go in the Holy Spirit forever in God's presence. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.